the motive of the people crossing over to that side of the border. Now, it's time to shift our focus to other developments. India and China held their first meeting of the key mechanism for handling the border affairs since the disengagement at the Demchok and the depth sunk friction points and agreed to maintain the peace and tranquility on the disputed frontier in line with the bilateral agreements and protocols. The meeting of the working mechanism for the consultation and the coordination on India-China border affairs in New Delhi reflected on the lessons learned from the events of 2020 in order to prevent their recurrence. The External Affairs Ministry has said in a readout, this was the 32nd meeting of the WMCC since its creation in the year 2012 but the first held since the two countries reached an understanding on October 21st that paved this way for the disengagement of front-line forces at Demchok and Depsang and the resumption of the patrolling at these two friction points on the line of actual control. Ajay Jandial, my colleague, joins me live on the broadcast. Ajay, 32nd meeting of the WMCC, uh, in fact, has taken place and MEA has issued a statement. Kindly break it down for the interest of our viewers how exactly significant this meeting is between the ties of India and China, and especially given the emphasis on the latest breakthrough that both the nations through mutual dialogue have received at the friction points of the LSE. Uh, see, you know, WMCC uh, is basically an important factor because after 2020, uh, when it was, uh, you know, uh, started, what uh, what has happened that in last uh, uh, several months when there was tension uh, between uh, India and Pakistan and uh, India and China, especially on the, after the uh, major clashes in Galwan, where uh, several people from both the sides have lost uh, army personnel, they have lost their life, and uh, uh, that was uh, definitely a uh, turn of event because earlier it was only an incursion or a face-to-face, uh, uh, -face, uh, you know, uh, tension between the two forces. But after that casualties, we have seen that uh, on other parts as well it spread. And uh, but India patiently have holded uh, the forces, and uh, then uh, talks were started. We have seen that uh, the result uh, on the LAC that now. Once again, patrolling is resumed in the Depsang and uh, Demchok area. After that, now, uh, you know, the talks 32, uh, you know, uh, working mechanism for consultation and uh, coordination of India and China, that uh, 32nd meeting uh, has held. So that indicates that uh, it was not restricted on the LEC, but on the other aspects as well. Uh, this is going to happen and it is going to give result as well. Um, no doubt that forces, those who are on the ground, they uh, they will look after their areas. They will ensure that uh, there is no trouble as far as the uh, as far as the uh, you know border tension is concerned or any incursion is concerned. They will not leave any un uh, stone, un uh, stone unturned uh, to ensure that uh, the safety of the borders and the areas. But uh, yes, there, there is an aspect that uh, uh, that after the, the number of series of meeting uh, on the LAC uh, issue and. Uh, after this, um, you know, meeting of working mechanism and uh, working mechanism for consultation and the coordination, that is also going to help, uh, you know, to uh, ensure the other aspects on the border and uh, other affairs on the border areas. All right. Thank you, Ajay, for giving us these details. And now the two sides have also prepared for the next meeting of the special representative of the border issues to be now also held soon. International affairs expert Sanjeev Shrivastav joins me live on the broadcast. Sir, in fact, good morning and I appreciate you joining me live on the broadcast. On Thursday, a significant development has taken place between India and China, the two bordering nations who have for a long time been uh, in a conflict related to the border-related issues. But this seems to have changed, in fact, the future course of the relations between the two nations. The 32nd WMCC meeting is going to, in fact, signal into broader aspects and broader areas where there are debates and uh, negotiations on the border issues. In your opinion, what is this, in fact, first meeting uh, for a key mechanism for handling the border affairs entails to, and how can this, in fact, strengthen going forward the ties of India and China? Uh, well, uh, first of all, a very good morning to you. Good morning to all the viewers. Uh, uh, you know, uh, this uh, uh, meeting, uh, WMCC uh, meeting, 32nd round of it is now, uh, uh, has happened, and uh, obviously, 
this is the first uh, such uh, WMCC meeting after the disengage, disengagement process has uh, been completed. Uh, and uh, uh, this is uh, obviously a, a new chapter in the uh, India-China relationship. Let's hope uh, that um, uh, such wisdom which has prevailed recently and when the two countries have agreed to uh, uh, disengage in the uh, Depsong and uh, Demchok areas and uh, they have started uh, patrolling and uh, uh, a status quo has been uh, restored there, uh, uh, which is a very constructive, very positive uh, development between these two major powers, these two uh, neighbors, these two ancient civilizations. And uh, if the ties between the two largest uh, uh, populated countries of the world uh, become you know, more and more stable and more and more uh, 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 cooperative, then it will be uh, beneficial uh, for the people's large populations of our two nations. And also it will give uh, a very good uh, constructive message uh, to the whole world uh, that uh, 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 two major powers are contributing uh, their best uh, for the uh, maintaining of the rules-based order. And, um, uh, and uh, this has uh, certainly uh, made a very, uh, uh, this engagement process has certainly made a very good beginning. And um, now the diplomatic engagement of a WMCC level has also been, uh, has begun. And uh, let's hope that uh, this follows up uh, with a special representative level talks. And as our external affairs minister, C.S. Jasankar, has said in a recent remarks that uh, now uh, time has come when the, both the countries should come, uh, uh, should sit together and look forward to the ways that uh, how we can enhance uh, this kind of understanding, this kind of uh, cooperation, this kind of uh, improvement, uh, which has been witnessed in India-China relations to the next level. And uh, in my assessment, uh, when the special uh, representative level talks uh, will begin, I am sure that the larger issues of uh, India-China border areas uh, will, be, uh, uh, will come under discussion. And um, the best uh, uh, thing, as I've been saying in, uh, in, on your channel before, also that the best uh, would be that the India, China, both the nations should initiate a dialogue also for clearly and properly demarcation of the entire India, China border areas. And uh, unless until that kind of a proper demarcation of the entire area, uh, in the entire India, China border area is done, uh, uh, I think. Uh, uh, some issues might uh, uh, occur again in future. So I think the best resolution of the entire India-China border area issue would be that the, both the nations uh, should you know, uh, uh, work for uh, uh, demarcating this entire area clearly and properly. That process might take time. It, will take, uh, a lo it might take a long time. But at least, at least when the uh, new chapter has begun in India-China relationship, uh, they should initiate such kind of a dialogue. And I'm, I, I believe that... Uh, when the special representative level talks will begin, uh, such issues might come under uh, consideration. So such kind of uh, deliberations uh, could also be uh, done uh, from the both sides. And if that happens, that will be very good. Uh, but uh, on the other side, one more uh, point I would like to uh, say, uh, what uh, External Affairs Minister C.S. has said with, the, uh, with regard to our uh, uh, economic ties with China, I, I also believe that, and I endorse the views of our external affairs minister, that uh, we should also uh, look for the diversification of our dependencies on the supply chains. And I think our country is a large country, huge economy, uh, and, uh, and the fastest growing major power. We should not uh, uh, be heavily dependent on a one single you know, uh, supply chain. And uh, obviously, we have to work for uh, various uh, kind of a diversification uh, strategies. Uh, with regard to our dependencies on the various supply chains. And if that happens, and I believe that the uh, government of India uh, will adopt uh, and uh, will you know, chart out certain strategies uh, so that uh, we uh, diversify our dependencies on other supply chains and we also develop our own manufacturing base. And uh, that should be the mantra, uh, the uh, self-dependency, self-reliance, uh, Atma Nirbharta, and we have to develop and work for developing our manufacturing base in such a big way that uh, our dependencies on the other uh, countries uh, could be lessened. So I think the uh, uh, vision uh, of uh, India-China relationship uh, from this government is very consistent, very clear. And uh, I think, the, uh, uh, as I said, and I would reiterate again, that a new chapter has begun in India-China relationship. All right. I hope that this wisdom uh, prevails and it continues uh, developing into a, a better uh, you know, relationship 
uh, between the two neighbors. All right, Sanjeev Srivastav, thank you for, in fact, giving us your time and putting this in perspective as what it means for both the nations to have held a meeting formally on discussing the border-related issues and the way forward. That was all the news of the nation and the world viewers. We'll continue to track all the developments very closely. Till stay with us.